Good morning. And welcome to the celebration of the Solemnity of the Nativity of John the Baptist. A special welcome to any visitors among us. All are invited to enjoy hospitality following this Mass in the Gathering Room. Our presider is Father Patrick Kennedy. With respect for the celebration of the Mass, Please silence all cell phones and electronic devices at this time. Please stand as we begin our liturgy. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. As we come together to celebrate this Eucharist, we are mindful of God's love and mercy for us as we ask for pardon and peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. God 
And let us pray. O God, who raised up John the Baptist to make ready a nation fit for Christ the Lord, give your people, we pray, the grace of spiritual joy and direct the hearts of all the faithful in the way of salvation and peace. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated now as we listen to the words from Scripture. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Hear me, O coastlands. Listen, O distant peoples. The Lord called me from birth. From my mother's womb, he gave me my name. He made of me a sharp-edged sword and concealed me in the shadow of his arm. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver he hid me. You are my servant, he said to me, Israel, though, through whom I, shall, I show my glory. Though I thought I had toiled in vain and for nothing uselessly spent my strength, Yet my reward is with the Lord. My recompense is with my God. For now the Lord has spoken, who formed me as his servant from the womb, that Jacob may be brought back to him, and Israel gathered to him. And I am made glorious in the sight of the Lord, and my God is now my strength. It is too little, he says, for you to be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob and restore the survivors of Israel. I will make you a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, Paul said, God raised up David as their king. Of him he testified, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will carry out my every wish. From this man's descendants, God, according to his promise, has brought to Israel a savior, Jesus. John heralded his coming by proclaiming a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was completing his course, he would say, what do you suppose that I am? I am not he. Behold, one is coming after me. I am not worthy to unfasten the sandals of his feet. My brothers, children of the family of Abraham, and those others among you who are God-fearing, to us this word of salvation has been sent. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please stand and we'll acclaim the gospel in song. be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the time arrived for Elizabeth to have her child, she gave birth to a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown great mercy toward her, and so they rejoiced with her. When they came on the eighth day to circumcise the child, they were going to call him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said in reply, No, his name will be John. But they answered her, There is no one among your relatives who has this name. So they made signs asking his father, Zechariah, what he wished him to be called. Zechariah asked for a tablet and wrote, John is his name and they were all amazed. Immediately his mouth was opened, his tongue was freed, and Zechariah spoke the blessing of God. Then fear came upon all their neighbors, and all these matters were discussed throughout the hill country of Judea. And all who heard these things took them to their hearts, saying, What then will this child be? For surely the hand of the Lord is upon him. The child grew and became strong in spirit, and he was in the desert until the day of his manifestation to Israel. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise I too want to welcome those of you who are visiting St. Olaf today. and. Um, I want you to know that uh, we're very glad that you're here. Throughout the year, we have many, many visitors who come in and out of our church throughout the week. And for a variety of reasons, they come and join us at celebrations like this and, and other things as well. Um, as you can imagine, we rely on our visitors to help us in our ministries to this downtown community. So I'm hoping that um, when the collection basket goes by, you might feel so generous and leave a little bit of your treasure here with us. We'd be very grateful to you for that so that uh, we can continue our work. And uh, we hope that uh, you will come back and visit us again. Um, 
And if you want to bring your purse and wallet with you, that'll be great too. So, nobody's laughing. <laughs> anyway, we're glad you're here. I'd also like to welcome those people who watch us on TV um, tonight at 8 o'clock and tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. This Mass will be broadcast on cable channel 6, and uh, there are many, many people who um, watch us each week because they simply can't get out and come to celebrations like this. And uh, um, I'm very grateful that you are participating in this particular way. I'm also grateful for the um, notes that you write me and let me know how much you appreciate this. Uh, we appreciate and um, welcome the opportunity to provide this opportunity for you to go to Mass. And so I'm hoping that today as we gather, we pray for each other and um, knowing that the Lord is among us wherever we might be today. I'd also like to welcome Peter Klosvaut from Germany. He's here for a conference this week. He was here last year uh, for three months on sabbatical, and he's come back uh, from Ger Germany to uh, um, pass out his joy to, to us. So we're very glad that you're here, Peter. Thank you for coming today. Should we welcome Peter to say hello? You know, you may not want to do it. And you may need it, not even know what you're supposed to do. But what God has in mind for each one of us who has been created in his image and likeness is to simply place ourselves at the service of our brothers and sisters and to do it in the name of Jesus Christ. And to take those words and those actions of Jesus Christ and make them our own. And he invites us to do that because all of us have been baptized into Christ Jesus. And we have become heirs to the kingdom of God. And being heirs to the kingdom of God, we are called to express that kingdom as we live in the world around us, not only with ourselves, but with one another. And there's a responsibility that comes with our baptism. An obligation, if you will, to do what generations of disciples have been called to do throughout their lives. And that's simply to make Jesus Christ known and loved in our time. And the fact of the matter is, is that many, many, many people forget what that responsibility is all about. They become overwhelmed by it. They simply let other people do the work and they sit back and take it all in. But every one of us who sits here today has a responsibility. And our responsibility is to take hold of this message and first of all, be touched by it in our own life. And what is the message of Jesus Christ? That I have called you by name that I've invited you into my life and I have shared with you my generous love and mercy, my compassion and my peace, and I give all of those things to you so that you can be buoyed up, your spirits can soar, and you can do that for one another. You know, we look at this world we live in, and we all scratch our heads and we say, how did it get to be this way? And we get very distracted with the conversations we find ourselves in about how terrible things really are right now. And in the midst of all of that, we miss some wonderful opportunities to simply be those faith-filled people who have hope in our hearts because of our relationship with Jesus Christ. And because we know we are unconditionally, unconditionally loved by him, that's what we present when we are in front of the people around us. More times than not, we enter into the conversations that draw us away from doing that well. 
we get caught up in the angst of the world, our lives and the lives of others, and we don't see it as an opportunity to simply be people who use words of peace, who listen intently so we can understand where people are coming from. We can show compassion through our words and our deeds. We can be forgiving when forgiveness isn't present. And we can love, even when it seems difficult to do so. That's truly living the message of Jesus Christ in real time. And don't you wonder what stops us from doing that? Why isn't that apparent? in each one of us who's been given particular talent, who has a unique personality, and to make a marked difference by who we are in the midst of the world we live in. It seems that that would be the goal of every person, but most profoundly the goal of every Christian person. We hear in that first reading today that the distant coastlands are called to give representation to God who has blessed them because he simply knows them. We hear in the psalm today, we are all wonderfully made. Do we see the wonder in ourselves? Do we see the wonder in each other? The people we live with every day, do we stand back and say, you're wonderful? I can't get over it how wonderful you are. And that excites me and that makes me enthusiastic about going out into the world and finding the wonder in each other. Do we see the wonder in people who don't seem to exhibit wonder in their life? Can we get beyond what's stopping that and look more deeply so that we can acknowledge them for who they are and maybe we can even help them along their way? Today we celebrate the feast of the birth of John the Baptist. John was a dramatic figure in the plan of God's salvation. John was very different, very unique. He was really out there, if you will. But he was blessed even before he was born. He leapt in the womb when Mary and Elizabeth got together and were touched by their love and their familial relationship, where they simply embraced each other in their need. When he was born, Zechariah, who had been struck dumb during the whole pregnancy, all of a sudden came alive as he spoke John's name. And what did the people around them say? Something is great in this individual, and we are witnesses to it. And they had no idea what John was going to be about in his life. And then John, who spent most of the time in the desert, began to call people to a new way of life. For what reason? So they could be saved? Sure. But that they could become their very self by putting aside the stuff that got in their way from being fully human and fully wonderful in their eyes and in God's eyes. And people who were baptized by John were different from that point on. But John's greatest and most profound work that he did was simply point to Jesus Christ. If you recall, people would say to him, are you the one who's coming? I am not he. I am here to point the way. And every one of us who has been baptized into Christ Jesus is called to do the same thing, to point the way to Jesus Christ. And now I know what you're thinking. I'm not worthy to do that. That was John's business, but surely not mine. You know, I don't have enough stuff. I don't have enough time. I don't even know where he is. How can I point to him? And the fact of the matter is, is that we make a big deal out of nothing because we see Jesus Christ every day of our life. 
First and foremost, at this table, behold the Lamb of God. He takes away the sins of the world. And we respond that even though I'm not worthy to receive you, come under my roof so I may be healed. To do what? To continue to point the way to you as I have come to you because it's been pointed out for me by other people who have cared about me enough to say, there is Jesus Christ. That's the work we're called to do. All of us can do it. We don't need theology degrees to do it. We don't need to be ordained to do it. We are baptized. We have come alive in Christ Jesus. You want to make this place a better place to live? You want to leave your mark on the world? You want to make your family life stronger and more peaceful? You want to help those who are in need and have been forgotten along the way? then do it in your own way. But see what Jesus Christ has given to you and to me and use it. Don't let it go dormant. Let it come alive in your heart. And simply through your words and deeds and your ordinary way of living life, be people of faith. Be people who talk about hope. Be people who love even when it's difficult to love. Be people who forgive even when you've been hurt miserably. Be people of compassion and do it every day and with everyone you meet along your way. And then you'll know what John knew when he did that to the best of his ability, that God had truly blessed him from the time he was born until the time he suffered martyrdom for the message he proclaimed. He knew that God was with him because he, not only did he point the way to Jesus Christ, he saw him in his life and he experienced that redemption. That's what's going to change this world we live in, is if we become those people who do the work we're called to do, through the grace of our own baptism. It's the work that everyone is supposed to do. And it's the work that all of us can do if we become unafraid, if we get over this business that we're not worthy, if we know that the gifts of the Holy Spirit and of Jesus Christ continually be, are given to us every day of our life, and we simply make them our own. And in making them our own, we can't hesitate or stop from sharing them generously with the people around us. So do the work of Jesus Christ. Point the way to him because you've seen him in your life and you know where he is. And when you know where he is, he continues to draw you and all of those we have an opportunity to serve deeper into his life so that someday we will join him in his eternal kingdom. We'll stand and we'll profess our faith. <clears throat> I believe in one God, Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death, was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And let us pray. For Christians everywhere, filled with the Holy Spirit, may we serve God in our words and in our deeds. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders in our community, state, and nation, may the Spirit guide them as they seek ways to serve the good of all people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this community and for our loved ones, may the light of our faith shine through our service to the most vulnerable among us and our love for one another. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the immigrants to our nation, for disabled persons around the world, and for all who are ill, hungry, or in any need, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For eternal rest for our loved ones who have died, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, give strength to our spirits and put hope in our hearts that what you have given to us through your Son, Jesus Christ, will hopefully be manifested in all that we do and that as we use the blessings you bestow upon us, we may lead ourselves and those around us to the place where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated now as we make preparation for the Eucharist and we bring up the gifts. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Father, the Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of our sins for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and for the Church. Almighty God, we place these offerings on your altar, and we celebrate with fitting honor the nativity of John the Baptist, who foretold the coming of the world's Savior, 
and pointed him out when he came, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through your Son, Jesus Christ. In John the Baptist, we praise your great glory, for you consecrated him for a singular honor among those born of women. His birth brought great rejoicing. Even in the womb, he leapt for great joy at the coming of human salvation. He, along of all the prophets, pointed out the Lamb of our redemption. And to make holy the flowing gifts of water, he baptized the very author of baptism and was privileged to bear him supreme witness by the shedding of his blood. And so, with the powers of heaven, we adore your majesty. Without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race, who always walk with us on this journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when as once for his disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and he breaks the bread. Father, we ask that you send forth the power of your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of his last supper, he took bread and said a blessing. He broke the bread, he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the chalice. He gave you thanks. He gave the chalice to his disciples, and he said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Holy Fathers, we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you've seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. We offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the offerings of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. Grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your son in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, give life to us through your Holy Spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son. Confirm in us the bond of communion, together with Francis, our Pope, Bernard, our Archbishop, and your entire people. Grant that all the faithful of the Church, looking into the signs of the times through the eyes of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of your Gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, 
sharing their grief and their pain, their joy and their hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and journey with them along the way to your kingdom. We remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of Christ and all the dead whose faith is known to you alone. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face. In the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles, the martyrs, St. John, Bap John the Baptist, and St. Olaf, along with all the saints, we shall praise you and we shall exalt you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us join together now and pray in the words that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day. By the help of your love and mercy, may we always be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of Jesus Christ be with all of you. And with Let's offer each other some sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
tender mercy arising like the sun visit us with light set your people free God's tender to give thanks to the Lord, to make music to your name, O Most High, to proclaim your love in the morning and your truth in the watches of the night. On the ten-string lyre and the lute, with the murmuring sound of the harp. God's tender mercy arising like the sun, visit us with light, set your people free. Your deeds, O oh Lord, have made me glad. For the work of your hands I shout with joy. O oh Lord, how great are your works! How deep are your designs! God's tender mercy arising like the sun. Visit us with light. Set your just will flourish like the palm tree and grow like a Lebanon cedar planted in the house of the Lord they will flourish in the courts of our God God's tender green to proclaim that the Lord is just my rock in whom there is no wrong God's tender mercy arising like the sun visit us with light set your My soul give thanks to the Lord, all my being bless his holy name. My soul give thanks to the Lord, and never forget all God's blessings. God's tender mercy. God who forgives all your guilt, who heals every one of your ills, who redeems your life from the grave, who crowns you with love and compassion. God's tender
Good morning. Uh, just for the sake of visitors, my name is Father David Hoshka. I have been serving as a uh, senior associate pastor. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the old guy <laughs> here at St. Olaf for the last three years. Uh, and I have been uh, reassigned by the Archbishop to uh, take a similar role as a senior associate pastor at Our Lady of Lourdes Parish over not far, St. Anthony, Maine. But some weeks ago, Father Kennedy invited me to say some words of farewell this weekend. Uh, I'm really grateful, thanks Father Kennedy, for the invitation, uh, and in gratitude I shall be brief. <laughs> Most of all, I just want to thank you, uh, all of you. When I arrived here in August of 2015, I was pretty unknown and untried. I was an aging Jesuit who had spent most of his life running schools and administering personnel in the, in the Jesuits. Um, my last effort in parish ministry had been 15 years earlier. Um, and so I am deeply grateful for your welcome, uh, your constant support, and especially your constant encouragement, and yes, even for the occasional correction. <laughs> <clears throat> I've come to appreciate that St. Olaf is truly an extraordinary parish, unlike any I've ever seen. You have this wonderful diversity and incredible hospitality and, and what I see is a, is a kind of a persistent fidelity in good times and in bad, in hard times and in good. You know, it's kind of like a marriage. You've hung in there and, and stayed with it. Uh, there have been many changes over these last three years. Father Kennedy and his staff have done wonders in renewing the physical plant here at the parish and kind of re-energizing the worship life uh, so I would like to encourage you. I'd like to encourage you to continue to support and nourish this parish, yes, with your resources, but also with your presence. And finally, I would urge you to uh, share the good news, you know, to invite back that growing population of former Catholics. Now, I'm not saying, you know, former members of the parish, who may have joined some other parish. There's a joke around most of the world that in the Archdiocese of St. Paul, Minneapolis, evangelization means stealing Catholics from the neighboring parish. <clears throat> I mean, it's fun, you know, but it really is kind of beside the point, isn't it? But there are so many people who simply aren't going to church or who have declared themselves to be nuns. And so to the extent that you and I find participation in this parish, something of great value that enriches our lives, talk about it and invite others, your friends, your associates, and people to come and find out. And finally, I would ask you to keep me in your prayers just as I will keep you in mine. And thanks again. The other day, somebody um, uh, stopped me in the hall and they said, I hear you're leaving. <laughs> and I thought, well, that's wishful thinking on somebody's part. <clears throat> but I said, um, no, I'm not. I said, Father Hoshka is uh, leaving to go to another assignment. You're not leaving? No. Oh. Oh. You're not leaving. No, I'm not. <laughs> you know, over the last um, many years, um, since 2014, um, we've been doing quite a bit together um, to renew St. Olaf. And um, uh, David has been an integral part of that um, by his support, his encouragement, his challenge. Um, but just the fact that he 
was always available to minister um, when he was asked to do so. And um, I will be very grateful, always very grateful for his service to us and his personal support to me and encouragement. And um, the parish, David, has been blessed by your presence. You know, my predecessor, Monsignor Fleming, used to say that if you're not running the show, that three to four years is about as long as you can take this particular assignment, given what goes on down here. And so um, it was not a surprise to me that um, um, David uh, was going to um, uh, move along and um, actually take uh, l less time and less hours so that he can gracefully move into retirement at some point in his life. But the point is, is that you have made a significant contribution to St. Olaf. And so again, thank you very much for being here. And let us pray. Almighty God, having feasted at this banquet, finding joy in the nativity of John the Baptist, we, your church, may always keep in mind that as the author of her rebirth, the Christ who, whose coming John foretold will continue to be told through our lives as we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. The Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Yeah.